ignorance, this ignorance of the realities faced by millennials in terms of the housing market today is astonishing that people in the mainstream financial press and real estate investors and realtors continue to spin this lie that millennials are just waiting to buy a house. We're just going to buy a house. I'm 32. I'm just going to buy a house the moment I get a chance to. No, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> Millennials are going on strike from the US housing market in 2022. This is both a short-term trend and a long-term trend. Millennials increasingly dropping out of the housing market, demanding less real estate and turning into a nation of renters. In this video, I'm gonna give you the stone cold hard data on this trend of how millennial demand in the housing market is dropping like a rock over time and how this is going to be a big problem for the sustainability of today's housing market because so many people erroneously believe that millennial demand is strong. In fact, the Wall Street Journal just came out with an article called Millennials are Supercharging the U.S. Housing Market. I'm going to pick that apart in this video. So many people believe this false narrative, but when you look at the cold hard data from the U.S. Census Bureau on demographic trends, housing demand trends, which I'm going to show you this data in this video, you're going to see the actual reality is that millennial demand in the housing market and young adult demand is weak. And that weak demand is going to cause a crash. So without further ado, let's get into the data on this, folks. So we're going to start things off with an article from the Wall Street Journal titled, Millennials are Supercharging the U.S. Housing Market. The article goes on to say, for years, conventional wisdom held that millennials would become the generation that largely spurned home ownership. Instead, since 2019, when they surpassed the baby boomers to become the largest generation, they have reached a housing milestone, accounting for more than half of home purchase applications. The generation's growing appetite for home ownership is a major reason why many economists forecast home buying demand is likely to remain strong for years to come. And all right, I think a lot of you are familiar with hearing these arguments in the mainstream financial press from realtors. Lots of people claim that there are supposedly robust millennial demand. Millennials, the generation born from about 1980 to 1996, comprising an age range of 25 to 40 years old. The narrative goes that we have so many millennials, 72 million millennials, in fact, and that they are the largest generation and they are going to propel the housing market forward for years to come. <laughs> I'm here to tell you right now, this narrative is complete crap and anyone selling you this narrative is lying to you about the fundamental demand for the US housing market. And there's really three principal data points and indicators which suggest that millennials, rather than propping up the housing market, are dragging it down. And I'm gonna run through these points one by one in this video. And the first one we're gonna start with is declining housing demand from millennials. That's right. Millennials are demanding less real estate and less housing today than they did 30 years ago. So look at this graph, everyone. We're tracking the number of households in America by different age segments. And the yellow line is the 25 to 44 year old age segment, which roughly corresponds to today's millennial generation. You can see that there's been about 41 million to 43 million households in this millennial age age segment since 1990 going all the way through 2021. Now, before we get into what that number really means, the flat number of millennial households, I think some of you are asking yourself, wait a minute, what's a household? Well, it's very simple. A household is simply anyone that occupies an apartment unit or a home. And it could be three people living under one roof or one person living by themselves. But basically, a household equates to real estate demand. Think of a household as occupied homes or apartment buildings. And we can see very clearly that the amount of apartment buildings and homes occupied by the 25 to 44 year old age segment in America has stagnated over the last three decades. So just wrap your head around that folks. Right now in 2021, we have the same amount of real estate demand coming from young adults that we did in 1990. And so I think some of you might be saying to yourselves, right? Like, how is this the case? If we're not seeing an increase in demand for real estate in terms of home buying and apartment living from young adults, who's actually living in real estate and housing units in America right now? Who's doing that? It's a simple answer, everyone. There's two big age segments that have grown over the last 30 years. While 25 to 44 has stayed flat, 
45 to 64 has surged, and then particularly 65 plus seniors have exploded over the last 30 years. Quick five second commercial, everyone. If you guys are enjoying the data in this video, please just smash that like button. That's the best way to support this channel. In 1990, we had 20 million senior households demanding real estate. Now we have 36 million senior households demanding real estate. And so rather than the growth of housing demand in America being propelled by millennials, people in their 20s and 30s, it's actually being propelled by seniors and baby boomers. This is the first point that you need to etch into your brain about the US housing market and the future of real estate demographics in America. It is not at all about millennials. It is about seniors and baby boomers. America is aging. We're getting older as a country and more and more homes are being owned by people who are 50, 60 plus. That's the reality of what's going on today. But that's just the first problem that we have with millennials in the housing market right now. That's just the first thing, that they're demanding less real estate. The second problem, which might even be a bigger problem, is financial. Quite simply, millennials aren't doing so great from a financial perspective. They're not saving very much money. They have a lot of debt and they really don't have the funds and finances to afford to buy a home. And you can see that exemplified on this graph. We're comparing three key lines here, everyone. Pay attention to what these lines are because it tells a very interesting story. The yellow line is the typical down payment for a home in America at a 5% down payment for a typical, let's say, FHA loan. And that typical down payment was around $5,000 in the late 80s, early 90s, and has since tripled to $16,000 in late 2021. So the typical home in America, 5% down, you need 16 grand to purchase the home. Well, obviously that's gone up a lot, and that's a big problem, everyone, because we can see here that the savings amounts for 35 to 44 year olds, the blue line, and then less than 35 year olds, the orange line, the savings amounts that these millennials, these young adults have in the bank has barely grown over the last 30 years. According to data from the Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances, we see savings amounts stagnating while the down payment is going up and this growing gap between the down payment and the savings amount means that more and more millennials are just priced out of the housing market. So even if a millennial Millennial did want to buy a home, say they did want to establish their own household and buy a home, they don't have the money to do it. And at some point, we're going to need the down payments to go down for millennials to have any hope of re-entering the housing market and being able to afford homes. And it's funny how much this is ignored. The reality is that millennials don't have much money, don't have much savings, according to this data from the Federal Reserve, it's just totally ignored in the real estate mainstream. Like if we go back to this article from the Wall Street Journal, take a look at this. Housing analysts say the pandemic and emergence of remote work accelerated millennial home buying trends already underway. Young families living in apartments decided to buy houses in suburbs or leave expensive cities for cheaper ones. Millennials who already own homes traded up for more space. That paragraph in that article is talking as if millennials have money. You need money to be able to move to a new city. You need money to be able to change your situation. You need money to buy a house. And very clearly, the data we just looked at is showing millennials don't have the savings and money to do these things. And this ignorance, this ignorance of the realities faced by millennials in terms of the housing market today is astonishing that people in the mainstream financial press and real estate investors and realtors continue to spin this lie that millennials are just waiting to buy a house. We're just gonna buy a house. I'm 32, I'm just gonna buy a house. The moment I get a chance to know, it's the exact opposite. We're not demanding as much real estate. We don't have enough money to afford the down payment. But really, I actually think the number three reason why millennial demand is going down is potentially even the biggest. And that's related to a decline in family formation, a decline in marriages, and a decline in having kids. This has been a big reality in America over the last 15 years. Marriage rates, down. Children, births, down. That is not good for the US housing market. And you can see what I'm talking about here on this graph, where we're tracking over the last 60 years in America. Number one, the number of households with a child, with their own child in the household. And then number two, we're tracking the number of married households that have kids. And you can see that for much of the last 60 years, the number of households with a child increased 
From 1960 to 2007, we saw a big increase in the number of households who occupy a home or apartment that have a child. But then over the last 15 years, we've seen this go down considerably. The number of households with a child now in 2021 is 34 million, and that's actually less than it was in the mid 90s. Meanwhile, very related most likely, the number of married households with a child is also plummeting from a high of 26 million in 07 to 23 million in 2021. And as I said, Big problem for the US housing market that fewer people are getting married and fewer people are having kids because there is no greater incentive to buy a house than if you're forming a family and settling down. If you get married and if you have a kid on the way, often the desire to own a home shifts from being a want to a need because all of a sudden if uh, there's a child and a growing family in the picture, you need to buy a house for the space and the security that that home offers. Well, now that fewer people are getting married and fewer people are having kids, there's gonna be way less urgency among young adults to buy a house, particularly at sky high prices and down payments that we're seeing today. And these trends in terms of lower marriage rates and lower birth rates are just getting started. They're just getting started and they're gonna continue to get worse. In fact, the percentage of adults who have never been married has skyrocketed from 22% of adults never being married in 1960 to now 34% of adults never being married in 2021. That's not just unmarried, that's I've never been married. And in fact, you would expect, given the aging of our population, that it would be the exact opposite. With an older population, that would mean more people who had the opportunity to get married, but we're seeing the reverse trend, which suggests that it's the younger generation, the young adults who are either putting it off until later in life or deciding, I don't wanna do this in general. And just to give you a personal anecdote about myself, I'm 32, I'm single, I live in Dallas. I feel no pressure whatsoever to buy a house because I have no need to. I see a housing market that's grossly overvalued and inflated. I think it's a horrible time to buy a home. I have no familial pressure to do that. Why would I do that? And I think many people out there are in the same situation as me. They say to themselves, this doesn't make sense. I have no need to buy a house right now, so why would I do it? Now, of course, this begs the question, if millennials aren't supporting the US housing market right now and causing these higher prices, then who is? Well, there's really two drivers, the first of which we touched upon earlier in the video, and that's seniors and baby boomers. There's been a 74% growth rate in housing units occupied by senior households over the last 30 years, compared to a 3% growth rate in millennial households. It's very clear that seniors are the driver. They're in the driver's seat right now of the US economy and the US housing market, and the sooner that people come to terms with that, the sooner that we're gonna have a more pragmatic, realistic take about about the future direction of the housing market, AKA prices are going down because the fundamental demand isn't there to support it. In addition to seniors, we're seeing investors step in and also demand a significant amount of homes. I've also covered this in recent videos. I'll have a link to the video on investor demand in the description below if you wanna check it out. But now according to Redfin, nearly 20% of all homes in America are purchased by an investor. That's more than triple the rate of 20 years ago. And in some markets today, like Atlanta and Phoenix, nearly one third of all homes are purchased by investors. And so the next time anyone in real estate tries to tell you that you should buy today because there's going to be so much millennial demand pushing prices up into the future, just reference this video to them. Tell them actually, no, it's seniors demanding real estate. It's investors demanding real estate. Uh, it's demand sources that likely aren't going to be fundamental in the long run. Seniors are going to start to move in with their children or move to nursing homes or die, unfortunately. That's going to lower housing demand. Investor demand tends to be very Fickle, it comes, pushes prices up, it goes, pushes prices down. And so these two demand sources are creating the illusion of a robust, strong housing market. But for a robust market, you need the young adult segment to be able to participate, the 25 to 44 year old millennial segment. And as we saw in this video, that is clearly not happening due to lower housing demand for millennials, less money to afford down payments and less family formation. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. This millennial housing market narrative is probably the biggest lie 
lie that I see continually repeated in the real estate market. So I felt like I really needed to bring the data to this topic so you guys can see the truth about what's going on. If you did enjoy this video, you did enjoy this topic, please hit the like button. That's the best way to support this channel and help me produce more content in the future. Additionally, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I come out with three or four of these data-driven videos per week, and I'm now doing live streams where I take requests from people who want to see me cover certain housing markets. So if you want to be part of those live streams, make sure you're a subscriber. All right, everyone. Until next time, this is Nick from Reventure Consulting signing off. Oh.